Have you ever been walking through the streets or scrolling through Twitter when suddenly, out of nowhere, something catches your eye? Maybe a TV in a shop is playing a trailer for a movie that looks absolutely stupid. Or a picture of something somehow manages to catch your eye despite everything else on screen. For me, this exact situation happened as I was just watching videos on my computer when a joke was made about a show with dragons that were maids that just lived in some random world. I laughed and just kept watching and told my friends the joke. We laughed at the simple plot of it alone. However, one day when I was extremely bored and thought of the joke again, I thought maybe I should watch it so I can just see exactly how bad it is. And it was that one simple action that I learned not to judge a book by its cover. I found myself pleasantly surprised when the first episode was done, so I watched another, which led to me binging the whole series in a single weekend. As you can probably guess, that show was Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. So how did my opinion of the show change so drastically, from a joke to one of my favorite pieces of entertainment to this date? Well, I'm here to express those feelings to all of you in the video that I like to call Why You Should Watch. This Kobayashi's Dragon Maid was produced by Kyoto Animations and aired in 2017 to TV channels across the world. The story of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a rather simple one of a working class woman in Japan named Kobayashi living in the city alone until one day during a drunken stamping out into the woods she finds a dragon named Toru who lands injured near the city and she manages to talk her into becoming her maid. And after that, the story kind of just goes over Toru's struggle to act more human so she can be with Miss Kobayashi. And when it comes to the plot, that really is about it. The plot is less about an overarching story and more about funny slices of the characters' lives, things like going to the beach and preparing for sports festivals. There are things that tie a timeline of sorts, like dragons coming in and becoming main characters. However, overall the plot of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is very simplistic, but it's also chock full of fun and interesting points that a normal TV show would never really dwell on due to the points not having enough material to go over. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, however, takes small trips to the store or the beach and makes them great and impactful moments that build the characters and their relationships to each other, while also allowing us as viewers to feel for these characters and truly get attached to them. Because we've all been in that situation of playing with things that you shouldn't at a store, or the disappointment of not being able to get someone something that they've wanted, or vice versa. It's these tiny, seemingly unimportant things that let these characters feel like real and relatable people, despite the fact that most of the main cast is literally otherworldly creatures. Not only that, but the mundaneness of all of the things is frequently interrupted by surprisingly deep and thoughtful talks about how to deal with the thought of things like how we're just blips in the long life of the universe, and how Kobayashi has never been wanted in a relationship until now, and she doesn't exactly know how to handle Toru's feelings towards herself. The shatter of the established feeling of fun and happiness for these deep and meaningful talks is one of the best parts of the show because just like in the real world, it's not a smooth and easy ride through life. Life is frequently interrupted by bad times like family members dying or friends that you know having to move away. And the show does more than just that with these scenes. While not exactly being the main point of the story, these scenes are quite amazing. However, the show also likes to try and remind the viewer that there are times in life where everything does end up just fine in the end, no matter how much you or the people around you think it might go south. For example, there is a scene in episode 2 where, while Kobayashi and Toru are in the market, they see a purse snatcher running away with a purse. Toru does a superhuman sprint towards the man and bashes him into the ground before standing up and looking around 
at a crowd of stunned people. And in this moment, both Toru and Kobayashi are horrified of what the people may think after what she's just done and never be able to look at her the same way again. However, the people aren't mean and shun her for being superhuman. They start to congratulate her for stopping a criminal and showing exactly how awesome that she really is. And it's this that leads me into one of my favorite things about the plot. The fact that it allows happy things to happen, because... Like before, life isn't just a bunch of bad or good, it's a mix, and in most media today, you have stories that are one or the other. Meanwhile, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid allows for the good and the bad to mix, and it makes for a form of immersion that you rarely see through TV these days. Which also leads me into the next part that I want to talk about the show, being... Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a very character-driven experience, as the story is made around you connecting to the characters as they grow and go on their adventures. And I feel as if Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid has a solid grasp on how to do this correctly. While primarily being a lighthearted comedy, when the story goes into the lower points as mentioned before, every character really gets a moment to shine when given the spotlight. If it be Miss Kobayashi's calm and collected way of going through the things in her life, or Kana just being the cutest kid of all time, I feel like I can make almost a separate video on just the characters alone, so I'll just go over them with bullet points for the sake of time. Miss Kobayashi. When it comes to all the characters in the show, I think I like Miss Kobayashi the most. Her drive to live a peaceful and mostly normal life, is something that I feel most people can relate to. She's just an office worker that sits down and writes code all day trying to just make it to the next day until she meets up with Toru and is shown some of her more prevalent characteristic traits. Kobayashi's a thinker who likes to take her time thinking of solutions and systems that will help her and the people around her to better themselves. This is shown several times, but the most obvious is when she sets up a system that makes it so her and her neighbors no longer have to deal with each other's noise because she made a schedule for all of them to do their activities without interfering with everybody else's time. It's this quirk about Kobayashi that I like the most. Even when a super-powered dragon dressed as a human smashes through her wall destroying her kitchen, she calms herself down and takes in the situation, and the fact that Toru has the ability to reverse all damage, and then just chills out and instead of doing any of the normal anime freak out and yell at the other person gag, she instead compliments Kana for saying something clever and actually manages to get the dragon to apologize to her for the intrusion. There is far more that I want to say about Kobayashi, however, I'll save that to the end of the video when I talk about the climax of the story. Overall, Kobayashi is smart and a likable character that I related to quite a bit personally. I didn't even get to say half the things that I wanted to say about Kobayashi, but even with the stuff that I've just covered, I have to give her a solid A plus grade. Toru is a dragon that was found in the woods by Kobayashi while she was drunk. Kobayashi helped Toru from a fatal wound, and the two quickly became friends as Kobayashi asked Toru to become her maid. From then on, Toru is in Kobayashi's life. Toru is normally happy and a go-lucky character that serves as the majority of the comical relief, but also as a romantic partner for Kobayashi, though the love is extremely one-sided on Toru's side. One thing about Toru is that she's a very old dragon despite what her human appearance may look like, and she spent the majority of her life fighting humans instead of living with them. This sets up a lot of funny scenes of Toru doing things like blowing up her and Kobayashi's entire kitchen when she was just told to use the stove's fire to warm up some food. However, it also leads to some genuinely heartwarming moments where Toru tries her best scouring the internet to try and make Miss Kobayashi's life a lot easier by learning how to care for a human. Not only that, but after Toru has been in Kobayashi's life for so long, Miss Kobayashi finds joy in the fact that she's no longer a lonely shut-in of a person who only has one real friend. This places Toru into an important spot in Kobayashi's life where Toru starts to affect Kobayashi in major ways, like how they talk about 
how it's scary for Toru knowing that her parents will never accept the fact that she's fallen in love with a human. Or the fact that she will live for millions of years after Kobayashi's death and knows that Kobayashi's life is a simple blip in her much longer life. However, in one of the episodes at a convention, she meets a man who tells her that the reason everyone finds this moment special is because it's a thing that can only happen here and now, and will never happen ever again in this exact way. This helps tie her character arc together in a satisfying bow. When all is said and done, I think Toru is a fun and energetic character, and I gladly give her an A+. Kana Kanamui. Kana is a typical cute little girl character of the show. The one that is there to act cute, and she does her job very well as when this anime came out, the entire anime community went absolutely insane with how much they loved her. However, she is more than that. Kana is introduced in the second show after she has been kicked out of her home and tries to follow her friend Toru into the human world. She attacks Miss Kobayashi after a misunderstanding and then in a rather heartwarming scene, she is offered to stay with Kobayashi and Toru as a daughter of sorts. Kana is a fun character in the fact that she is normally the driver for a lot of the touching plot points in the show. For example, there is an episode where Kana is trying to get Miss Kobayashi to go to her sports festival. However, Kobayashi's working on that day and can't make it. And, like a child, Kana gets sad. And for many of us, we know that feeling of doing something and really wanting our friends and family to see it or witness it. And then, they have something else to do or didn't find it as amazing as you did. This one scene also shows us how close Kana is to Kobayashi, and how much Kobayashi has started to care for her, very similarly that she has to Toru, as right after this scene, Kobayashi tells Toru that she's going to be coming home later than usual because she wants to try and make Kana happy. Kana isn't just that though, she's also one of the cutest things I've ever seen, especially with the way that she goes around eating lots of random stuff which only further cements the fact that she's new to this world and its customs. Kana is a cute ball of sunshine that makes me happy just by looking at her. I give her an A. Next up is two of my favorite characters, Fafnir and Takia Makoto. Okay, these two have to go together because they probably have some of the smallest roles in the entire main cast, but one of the biggest impacts nonetheless. Starting with Fafnir, he's your typical dragon, loves his gold and hates humans because they want his riches. He's introduced in episode 2 when the group decides to have a party and he is one of Toru's friends that arrives to the party. He starts off as a bit of a... Kill them. Kill all who try to steal your treasure. Kill all who are suspect. Curse them with death. Curse their generations to come. Yeah... However, through his interactions with Takia, he slowly begins to grow more fond of some humans. Speaking of Takia, he is Kobayashi's workmate at her job. They're also drinking buddies with a long past of hanging out. Takia is normally your average kind guy. However, when he's in the solitude of his own home or when he drinks with Miss Kobayashi, he lets his real colors fly as an otaku. When he's like this, he normally acts spastic, especially about video games, anime, and maids. Now, the way that these characters first meet is Takia is playing a game when Fafnir gets interested. And Takia lets him play, and he is instantly hooked to it, and plays it non-stop for the rest of the party. Then, later in the series, at about episode 5, Fafnir comes back to the human world to keep an eye on Toru. After having trouble finding a nearby place, he quickly goes and he asks Toru. They end up having him stay at Takia's place for a while, and after this one scene, Fafnir is never depicted without Takia at least being nearby, and it also turns out that Fafnir, in our next encounter with him, is addicted to MMORPGs. And this is where I felt something special between these two characters' interactions came from. Every time that they were shown together, it was just them hanging out. And slowly, as more scenes of them talking and playing games showed up, you could see that Takya started to tear down some of Fafnir's inner hatreds towards humans. There's even a great scene between the two where Fafnir leaves the house for the first time since he moved in, and he 
thinks about how in this world there are people you just can't get along with, and there are some people that are surprisingly tolerable. He labels it hits and misses. And right after this scene, he looks over at Takia and he just tells him he's a hit in this world of misses. And this perfectly fits into their character arcs, as this shows that Fafnir is making progress towards being more social, like Kana and Toru, though being with someone that pushes him out of his comfort zone a little bit. When it comes to the two of them, I think they play off of each other perfectly, and perfectly show the effects that someone can have on someone like Fafnir, and that's why I give these two a solid A. A little bit more time developing the relationship would have made it go the extra mile and truly pushed it to an A+. Overall, the characters in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid are almost all lovable and make the Slife of Lice aspect of the show grow around them and the effects they have on the other characters. While there are some characters that take away from this feeling, most of the supporting cast also plays off the main characters while helping bring home the fact that this is just a slice of life of someone else's life. See what I did there? When I went into this video, I planned on going hard on the lack of memorable songs from this show. However, on a repeated listen to the soundtrack, I noticed that the music, while a lot of it is just there to fill the role of background music, there was also quite a few great songs in there as well. There is one track in particular that I found the most memorable in the first watch through that I did, and it was Good Night, See You Tomorrow, which I liked for its slow and beautiful pacing and composition, and it did more than serve its purpose in the few scenes that it was used in, uh, primarily at the ending of episode one. Like I mentioned before though, some of the songs were lost in the anime that shine brilliantly when listened to separately. Songs like Forest Map Instrumental, which I like for the faster pace and energetic feeling. Karamichi, which is also great for setting slower and more touching scenes that, as you know, I've done nothing but gush about, is truly amazing as well. Goodbye is great for the same reason as Karamichi, but also is just a good song to listen to and relax. And Extraordinary Everyday, which I love for the fun and energetic usage of the instruments, I found it very good and well implemented into the show itself as well. Then of course there is the best song in the whole show, and it's the song that they use for the opening of every single episode, Azura No Rhapsody. Now I want to state that I might have missed a few songs due to me being limited to watching what I could only find on YouTube. However, I was pleasantly surprised at the joy I experienced when I went back and listened to the soundtrack again, and I even found some songs I'm going to personally use myself even. So I'm going to give the soundtrack a solid B-. A lot of music is forgettable, but there are a few hidden gems inside there. But you will have to listen to the soundtrack alone by itself and not watch the show to truly experience them. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is a stellarly animated show. Animated by the same company that brought you Kayon, Kyoto Animations, brought their A game when making this show. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is animated with vibrant and expressive characters that are appealing to the eye due to their bright colors that help draw your eyes to keep attention on the characters themselves. The show is really a joy to just look at because of all the soft curves that let the gentleness of the colors and the drawings relax your mind as you watch. Then there are also the action scenes where a dragon may be using a power like burning a kitchen with fire or uh, this beautifully animated fight scene that was held in the field between Kana and Toru which drops the normal art style to bring uh, more jagged and rough drawings to remind everybody that we're still dealing with super deadly dragons capable of destroying this entire planet, which is something that I personally love a lot. I think that the animation looks great and that every single scene flows together extremely well, so I have to give the animation of the show a A.
the voice acting in Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is absolutely stellar. I find both the Japanese and the English dubs are great, so that's why I'm going to be covering both of them. I feel like in both, every single voice actor really got into their role of the characters and was able to put across the most emotions I've felt in characters for a very long time. My favorite of the bunch being Sarah Weldon Helt and Yuki Karahara's performance as Toru. They both nailed the fun and energetic personality of Toru's character while not making her overly loud and annoying. And I can't really choose between the two when it comes to which I like more because they both simply are perfect for this role. Now, that is not to knock any of the other voice actors though. For example, Garrett Storms and Daisuke Ano portray of Fafnir is perfect for his loner personality. However, I do have to say that I prefer Garrett's performance more because he says his lines a little less flat while still making himself sound like Fafnir would speak. Next up is Miss Kobayashi's voice actresses, Leah Clark and Mursume Tamuri. They also did a wonderful job bringing her to life. They nailed her normally more monotone voice, but also nailed a lot of her more higher-pitched yells and screams. Between the two, I have to say that I prefer Mutsumi's performance better, because she does a lot better in the normal talking scenes, but is also better at getting the screams and yells to become more natural sounding. Not to knock Leah Clark, who does an amazing job, but it does occasionally sound like when she yells, she's forcing out her screams as much as she can. Kana's voice actresses are vastly different in quality, however, compared to the last two. Jade Saxton does her job, but she doesn't really do it in a great way. She says all of her lines in a very odd and whispery voice that can sound really weird at times. Maria Nagawa, Na whatever that last name is, however, did a fantastic job in her version of Kana. Her voice is quite literally perfect at making it sound like we're listening to a kid and gets across her playful energy and sense of wonder at the world. Maria Nagawa is easily the one that I would much rather listen to as I felt like Jade Haxton really didn't give her all into the performance of Kana and I feel like Maria is a perfect match for Kana. And last, but certainly not least, we have Elma, who is a dragon of an enemy faction of Toru, Kana, and Fafnir. She's a very fun character, and the voice acting done by Yuki Takata and Rachel Glass make her few episodes that she's actually present in in the show extremely memorable. Let's start with Rachel. I have to say that she's like Maria Nagawa is Takana, practically a perfect match for the character. She's perfect at voicing Elma's love for food when she starts to eat, but she's also great at nailing her more nervous and self-conscious side. Yuki Takahata, on the other hand, is very flat in comparison to Rachel, especially so when it comes to Elma's eating, which is what she primarily does. Yuki is great at having her near-ready-for-battle attitude, though it only shows up at one point and is still beaten by Rachel Glass's performance, at least on a personal level for me. So I have to say that Rachel Glass's take on the character is much better than that of Yuki's, due to her being able to voice Elma's more important characteristic qualities better. All in all, the voice acting for both the dub and the sub are amazing, with positives and negles riddling both. And to be honest, I love both versions and have watched both fully through the entire series, and find it hard to choose between the two of them. I guess for me, I'd have to go with the English dub, but that's just personal choice because it's in my native language and I personally am extremely bad at reading and would have to pause the series a lot just to read what is being said. But of course, that's just my personal tastes, and all in all, both versions of voice acting are extremely solid, and I give it a A. So here we are, the final episode, it's the final stretch, 
how does Miss Kobayashi's final episode get across a perfect ending for these characters? Well, in the final episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, we're introduced to the father of Toru, what is considered kind of a king of all dragons. He's an extremely powerful dragon who takes Toru away from Kobayashi without her even knowing. Kobayashi has to live for the first time in several months without Toru, and it's in this episode that was truly special to me my first time watching. And seemingly, many other people seem to agree, as in this episode, we see Kobayashi start to not be able to feed Kana a good meal every day, or even be able to take care of herself and make coffee simply because Toru is gone. Her house starts to get filled with dirty clothes and beer cans that she normally would have Toru clean up, but she's no longer there. This one moment shows Kobayashi at her lowest, with a major piece of her life gone, a piece that she loved to see every single day, a piece that made her life easier and happier. This continues for a while until one day Toru randomly comes and knocks on the door again, and as Miss Kobayashi runs to the door, us as viewers are left with an ominous level of dread as the music is non-existent in this scene. They meet again, but not for long before being interrupted by Toru's father showing up and demanding to have her come home. Toru tries her hardest to speak out to her father, but finds herself once again unable to fight back to try and stay in the human world where she wants to be with Kobayashi. Kobayashi steps forward to try and talk to Toru's father, like she's always done throughout the series. She is suddenly attacked and is given a light scar on her cheek, however, by Toru's father, as he says that he will kill her if she does not speak very carefully. And it's in this scene that I found why I love Miss Kobayashi so much as a whole series. Throughout this entire series, Kobayashi has been able to think things through. Everything that she was going to say, she's always been able to think it through unless she has been drunk. However, in this one scene, Kobayashi has to throw that to the wayside. She doesn't know what to say, and she doesn't have time to think of what she wants to say. So she has an emotional burst, similar to when she gets drunk, but this time, she's entirely sober. And she just starts to scream that Toru's father won't be taking Toru back, because she's done nothing wrong, and that the future that's filled with disaster that he keeps talking about shouldn't be pushed upon Toru's shoulders. She tells Toru's father that dragons and humans can live in harmony by simply putting their differences aside and just trying their best to build bonds to live with each other. She also screams at Toru's dad that she needs to have a little bit of faith in Toru. And with that, Toru's dad gives her the opportunity to go and live with Kobayashi again as they head off to Kobayashi's parents to celebrate the holidays with. After watching this ending the first time, I felt something in me click. Maybe it was because of my past of being unable to stand up to my own father. Well, whatever it is, I still have no idea what it is. It was something that I guess I just needed to experience at that point in time. I needed to have an experience like this at that exact moment. And this is what that show gave me. And with that, I give the final episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid a A+. For brilliant execution and the depiction of our character's realism and desperation in the circumstances that they were put in during this final episode. Throughout watching Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid again for this review, I was pleasantly surprised at how much more appreciation I had for the series coming back to it. The three days that I spent re-watching and typing this script have been insanely fun in all honesty. Kobayashi and Toru and the rest of the Dragon crew really made me happy and enjoy myself as I went back to see all their misadventures again. I was able to sit back and truly enjoy the show despite the fact that it had fan service quite a bit. I looked past the few minor complaints I had with it and was able to enjoy the show for what it was, even 
though it was about superpowered dragon maids that live in a nameless city in Japan with an average human woman with no special powers. This series went over topics and things that I really want TV shows to go over. The struggles and the problems that these characters went through spoke out to me on a personal level. With them going over how we're so small and insignificant in the grand story of the universe, or in the awkward situation of randomly having someone wanting you and not exactly knowing how to respond to it. Or the disappointment of not being able to impress somebody near to me with my own abilities. This show related with me on such a personal level that I probably will never experience again. And I just love this series so much. It has quickly shot up to being probably my favorite anime of all time, just from how much I was able to understand the growth and the struggles of the characters that I was watching. And that's why, everybody, that I think you should watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid.